That was a genuinely sweet moment on all of your behalves there. <laughs> and you're all sitting there going, ah, they'll never last a day. It's a tough industry. People with their families, ah, can't. <laughs> Tonight's penultimate category is artistic achievement. Here to present the award is a man who's had a few artistic achievements of his own, having drawn the graphic novel Watchmen, as well as the recent iPhone revamp of Beneath a, Sk a Steel Sky. He's joined by an actress who's known for a role in the Inbetweeners as for her exploits on the ice. Please welcome, please, excuse me, please give a warm welcome to Dave Gibbons and Emily Atak. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, games continue to stamp a unique mark on the world of visual design <clears throat> as they age ever closer towards photorealism. We've also seen an explosion of more experimental, stylized graphical approaches. Let's take a look at this year's nominations for artistic achievement. Artistic achievement. Batman, Arkham Asylum. There's no escape, Joker. I don't want to escape. I'm having way too much fun. Assassin's Creed 2. Street Fighter 4. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2. On, don't let go! Flower. Uncharted 2, Among Thieves. Two. I've always wanted to do this. Flower. I'm genuinely shocked. So um, I must say, I have forgotten the speech because I really didn't think I was going to get it. Uncharted, um, fan well, the company of games we were in amongst, I mean, I'm really, really, really shocked. So um, first of all, I'd like to thank Kelly Santiago and Genova Chen of that game company. I'm losing it now, even with my voice, I'm that shocked. Um, Ski Santa Monica Studios, Randall Lowe, Eric Cook. Um, my team in Ski ISD, Sony Computer Entertainment, all the same, but to the students um, in the Dare to Be Digital categories, I'd say that this is what can happen if you guys apply yourselves. So, to you, and to the guys at that game company, thank you very much. Thank you. We're here, congratulations. Thank you very much. Good night, so then, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the Best Game Award. Here to present it is a man whose program Games Wipe proves you can make decent gaming television without dressing up an aging astronomer like Megatron. Would you kindly welcome to the stage Mr. Charlie Brooker. Blah, 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 skip the dialogue bit. Right, uh, in spite of the economic apocalypse, 2009 saw the release of some fantastic games, from the intrigue of ancient Venice to the stark eroticism of an airport massacre. Uh, games have startled it. We all thought that, didn't we? We all found that ar arousing, didn't we? It was only bettered by that bit in heavy rain where you cut your finger off. That was sexy. Uh, 
Games have startled, amused, and yes, aroused in equal measure. We've been pitted against zombies, pirates, terrorists, supervillains, global conspiracies, but most of all, our own thumbs. Here are the nominees for best game. Best game. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. FIFA 10 Uncharted 2 Among Thieves Batman Arkham Asylum Left for Dead 2 This used to be a nice neighborhood <laughs> Assassin's Creed 2 And the BAFTA goes to Batman Arkham Asylum. Thank you. I mean, as a, as a British developer, the BAFTAs obviously mean something very special to us, so uh, it really is a genuine privilege to be holding uh, one of these masks, and uh, we'd love to thank the Academy for that. Uh, just for Dara, I'd also like to thank our family, uh, my beautiful wife, for putting up with so much of us not being around to make this game. Um, and thanks to the team who made it possible. Uh, also, of course, thanks to Warner Brothers and IDOS as well for supporting us all the way. Lee, do you want to say something? Yeah, on behalf of IDOS, I just want to thank the guys at Rocksteady. They've made an amazing game. The guys at DC, the guys at Warner, and the team back at IDOS in the UK. Thank you very much. <laughs> game of the year, then, ladies and gentlemen, Batman Arkham Asylum. I have to say, I agree with it. It was fantastic. I, I found it enormously gripping, that game. Now then, it's been a fantastic evening. We've had cheers, we've had cheers. You may think you've seen it all, but there's one award left to give, and what an award this is. Here to present the BAFTA Fellowship and to explain a bit more about this year's extraordinary recipient, please welcome Ant and Deck. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's an honour to be here, and it really is an honour to present this next award, the Fellowship Award. The Fellowship is the highest accolade the Academy can bestow. Can bestow. Can bestow. Bestow it is. Bestow. And the, you said have the red. I said I'll the, stick with the white. No, no, I said I have a bit of the red. The red's good. Have some white and then some red. I have both. <laughs> the Fellowship is awarded annually to an individual in recognition of an outstanding and exceptional contribution in their field. Previously honoured fellows include Alfred Hitchcock, Steven Spielberg, Will Wright and Nolan Bushnell. As the creative mastermind at Nintendo for almost three decades, 
the recipient of this year's BAFTA Fellowship has unleashed massed entertainment with an unmatched global breadth, cultural endurance, and of course, consistent success. The mustachioed Italian plumber he created almost 30 years ago has become by some measures the planet's most recognized fictional character, rivaled only by Mickey Mouse as the creator of the Donkey Kong, Mario and Legend of Zelda series, which have collectively sold more than 350 million copies, and the person who ultimately oversees every Nintendo game, Shigeru Miyamoto, may be personally responsible for the consumption of more billions of hours of human time <laughs> than anyone else ever. In, in a 2008 Time magazine poll, Miyamoto was voted incredibly, the most influential person in the world. And tonight, he is the first Japanese person ever to receive a BAFTA fellowship. His earliest games still hold up as worthy and relevant 10, 15, 20, even 30 years after they first appeared. They are the blueprints of modern video games, and it's no exaggeration to say he probably inspires most of the developers out there today. You could even say there wouldn't be video games today as we know them, if it wasn't for mere mortal. He is, without doubt, the grandfather of all games developers. Uh, but the amazing thing is, for his entire legacy, for all of the mainstay, iconic characters he's designed and created, he still is pushing the limits with his most recent projects and his creations. He is fiercely private and humble in an industry that can appear brash and unfocused. Perhaps most fittingly and defining of all, when once asked if he thought video games were bad for you, he replied, video games are bad for you? That's what they said about rock and roll. <laughs> Let's take a look at some of his work. If you asked you know, any game designer who their favorite game designer was, 95% of the time you're gonna get the answer of Miyamoto song. I think there are some pretty towering figures in the video games industry, but to me, Miyamoto stands head and shoulders above the rest. He's gone on creating sort of decade after decade games which have, which have moved the industry forwards, which, which have taken it to new places, and which have won critical acclaim and a huge audience. Miyamoto's games are masterpieces. You know, they're always crafted out of extremely simple little elements, but you get totally invested in these characters and stories and these worlds. It's a very canny combination of this sort of creative artistic streak and, an, and a knowledge of what resonates with people and a very, very solid understanding of the kind of technology and, and engineering skills of the company. Miyamoto games are really not about trying to kill the next person. They're a sort of a powerful gravitational force, I think, in games, um, back towards the element of, of simple play. The first game, Donkey Kong, which came out in 1981, it was a revolution. It had four different levels. The screen changed. It sounds incredibly conventional today, but this really was a new idea. Jumping, platforming, none of those had been done before Miyamoto came along and just sort of ripped up the rule book and, and came up with a, with a new way of doing things. You were a lot more like a person than you'd ever been before. This was a little man, it wasn't an abstract shape, it wasn't a spaceship, it was a little tiny man who you were controlling trying to climb through a building site to, to save his girlfriend from an angry monkey. The first time I saw Donkey Kong, I knew there was a new master gamer in town. And since then, I have marveled in the wonderful works that Miyamoto has created. Before that, it had been about bits and bytes and programming and coding, which of course is the bedrock of computer gaming. But he brought to it a more artistic and creative vision. He's kind of almost going from the black and white world of silent movies to full color, high definition. That's the kind of, that's the transformation that he brought to video games. Nintendo then started making home console machines. The first game they did was involved this character who they've now called Mario, Super Mario Brothers. And um, it just took the idea, a quantum leap forward, which is absolutely typical of Miyamoto, that he wasn't just photocopying a successful formula. He was doing something really new. 
The Zelda game, I think, uh, is probably one of the most significant developments in, in video gaming history. It changed the way that people felt about the sort of achievement process within games. It was much more about exploring the world uh, and about the characters and a developing plot line. And I think that's one of the biggest contributions he's made is the idea of computer games as a sort of storyboard, a storytelling genre rather than simply a sort of very functional bit of computer programming. But if you look at the 90s, the Miyamoto approach to some people was saying that it looked out of date, but the response to this was not to chase after Sony and, and try and do something that looked like a PlayStation. The response was the Wii. It seemed like an abrupt left turn in the industry with the Wii, but yet it's amazing how beneficial that's been to everybody. The Wii has brought in so many more people playing games than otherwise would have been playing them. And I think that's kind of indicative of the way Miyamoto thinks about the game world. He's always looking for ways to bring more people into the experience. It's, it's very positive in, in ways that extend beyond gaming. These games are useful in hospitals, they're useful with people who are disabled, who have communication difficulties. They're, they're very useful for opening up paths of interaction. You are getting beyond the control pad. You are bringing games to people who want to interact by moving physically. And this just throws the door wide open to people who don't think of themselves as gamers. I think he sees gaming as a facilitator rather than as the end result necessarily uh, of what he wants people to try and do. So, so Wii Music is the perfect kind of synergy of that, his, his ambition for people to go out there and pick up a saxophone or a guitar, but to learn how to do that and to get the kind of buzz for it through sort of gaming in their living room. Whereas a lot of people who work in the computer games industry live and breathe gaming, I think that what Mr Miyamoto lives and breathes is the world around him. He's got his own vision, he's got his own creativity and he, and he looks to Nintendo as a way to amplify that and uh, Nintendo benefits from it. Probably has the all-time sales record by far of anybody designing games in the industry. It's amazing how humble he is. He has you know, some very close people he's worked with for many years and he's the first one to tell you how important they were to the process. And in terms of building a cohesive creative team over such a long period of time, I think that might be one of his greatest accomplishments. You'd be picking games endlessly if you were to say, well, this one, of course, owes to Zelda, this one owes to Donkey Kong, this one owes to Super Mario Brothers. You'd, you'd be there all night. He's responsible, basically, for modern computer game. He's the main man. You know, in some sense, he's probably had a bigger impact on play in general, you know, including toys, including a lot of other things beyond video games than probably anybody else you know, in the last 50 years or so. He's been made a chevalier of the French um, Order of Arts and Letters. He uh, has been voted the world's most influential man in a time poll. On the one hand, this sounds like wild hyperbole. On the other hand, the, the sheer hours of human delight that his games have given the world, I think, really earn this place. And it's why it's absolutely delightful that BAFTA are recognising this. <laughs>
<laughs> I met Donkey Kong when I was 27, when I was called a young employee. As I was called that so often, I have been thinking that I am forever young. <laughs> Looking at the face in front of me today reminds me that I'm getting very old. <laughs> Two, I feel humbled because I cannot develop a video game just by myself. I'm rather embarrassed to receive such an award as a personal award. Therefore, I'm receiving the award together with everyone who has worked with me in the past 30 years. And I would like to thank each one of those people for their hard work. Thank you. I have been working in the game industry and more specifically working for Nintendo over 30 years now. Entertaining people is my dream. So I'm grateful that Nintendo pays me for living out this dream. <laughs> the video games industry has changed dramatically since I began working in it. When I started my create a career at Nintendo, there was no such thing as video game making at the company. My only wish was to make something that could surprise or entertain many people. I was lucky enough to get the job that involved, involved creating video game right from the dawn of the industry. The first game that I was involved is developing was Donkey Kong. <laughs> Before Donkey Kong, the majority of game were created by game. Uh, before Donkey Kong, uh, the majority of games were created by engineer. But Donkey Kong was one of the first games created by artist and game designer. Due to the popularity of Donkey Kong, game designers then began to play a major role in creating video game. However, what is still important today is to make them fun. I'm often asked what inspires me in my work? As a young child, I enjoyed playing outdoors near my home and found great inspiration in the natural world around me. Even today, the world around me continues to inspire and fire my imagination. Caring for my dogs gave me inspiration for Nintendo dogs. Way myself gave me a hint to make with it. <laughs> My staff and I are motivated by trying to develop something that is totally unique. To create a new standard, you have to be up for that challenge and to really enjoy it. While developing New Super Mario Brothers Wii, we sports resort and we fit plus last year. I become even more conscious about the image of how people are playing with video games rather than just the contents of games I develop. When I was, look, uh, when I was working on New Super Mario Bros. Wii, I imagined how a single player would play it and then how four players could enjoy it together, which had been my dream even since the first Super Mario Brothers game that we made 25 years ago. So instead of just focusing on the making the game contents, 
I'm much more interested in creating an atmosphere where players can communicate and interact with each other. I feel that I was able to make one more step forward with the game this time. As developers, our imaginations and creativity can take us to countless fascinating places where we hope to create different experiences for people of all age. This is part make our industry a joy and a dream to work in. Thank you to Academy for this great honor and to my friends and colleagues at Nintendo and to our partners and developers all over the world for making this great journey possible. I hope that the video game industry will continue to receive increasing recognition for the part it plays in both entertainment and culture. Thank you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we end with the BAFTA Fellowship for Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, presented by Anton Deck, who are the best double act since Dom Jolly and Chris Deering about an hour ago. <laughs> that is how we end on a high. It does bring to an end tonight's proceedings, though I can assure you that the festivities will be going on for quite some time. Congratulations to all of you who have won awards and to all of our winners, as well as those who are pipped to the post. A huge debt of gratitude for affording us gamers a spectacular year of exciting, innovative, and compulsive adventures. I am available for voice work. Uh, I, I'm not sure many of your games really require an Irish character, but I'm just saying, uh, I cannot wait to see what you come up with next year. Genuinely, as a gamer, it's been a pleasure to be playing with your work. Thank you very, very much. Thanks to our sponsors, <laughs> Jeff. Thanks to our sponsors, Game, by the way, to all of you watching online. That's the end of the show. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. Good luck. We'll see you again. Good night, folks. Good night. Good luck. Good night. Good night.